No father should have to lose his son. It goes against the natural order of things. Without our sons, we have no future. I've spent my life fighting stupidity and cowardice for a better world, where good people can prosper and thrive without fear. I know the cost. I see it every day, and I accept it. But I can't accept this. Will's tragedy can't be for nothing. I'll make sure of that. This is not where it ends. This is where it begins. I checked in on Mitchell today. Gideon's kicking his ass, but he'll get there. He's got a good head on his shoulders, and that same determination that Will had. I can see why they were close. The Marines, in their infinite wisdom, deemed him unfit for duty. Can't fight with one arm. Never tell a soldier what he can't do. If anyone deserves a second chance, it's guys like Mitchell. Give me an army of men like him, and there's nothing Atlas can't do. Lagos. If there were a better example of government ineptitude, I haven't seen it. The KVA walked in like they owned the place, like it was their right to take whatever they wanted. Helpless, the officials come to me. They came shocked that a few well-armed men can bring a nation so great, so powerful, to its knees. What sort of men are they? They ask. I tell them they are simply men who are willing to do whatever it takes to achieve their goals. Without emotion, without bias. And once you understand this most basic of facts, you have everything you need. Above-ground nuclear power facilities have been a tactical hazard since their inception. In 2048, Atlas submitted a lengthy report to the Defense Department on the security risks. I guess they didn't like the findings, because they buried the report. I think they gave us the security contract just to shut us up. But that's not why I accepted the job. I took the contract because Atlas would give the taxpayer the best return on their buck. We spent millions on concrete reinforcements. We build anti-aircraft defenses. But our greatest achievement? Eliminating human error. You can build your defenses as strong as you like, but the human race is the weakest link in any system. When an attack does come, and I have no doubt it will, then mark my words, it will be because someone has left the door unlocked. You can't protect what you can't control. Leaders lead. Success or failure comes down to the choices we make. Capturing Dr. Danois and bringing him to justice would be a decisive step forward in the hunt for Hades, but what purpose does it serve to prosecute this man for his crimes if we can use him to prevent future crimes against humanity? Hundreds, maybe thousands, have been killed by this man's experiments, but what if the results could one day benefit humanity and save lives? Is it wrong to put that knowledge to use, regardless of how it was obtained? It's only right that we respect the dead. What better way to honor them than give meaning to their demise? Scientific data exists outside any moral framework. It's a resource that can be exploited for good or bad. The choice is ours. But to choose to do nothing with it is no choice at all. It is to accept that innocent people died for nothing. A mission of this scale is a serious endeavor in the best of circumstances. Operating in the middle of a busy tourist destination is, without doubt, extremely risky. But the risk is the key to our success. Hades has gambled on our humanity. No government can survive the public outcry if hundreds of innocent tourists are killed in a botched mission. Hades knows this. But we're not the government, and our power does not come from popular mandate. The government could have stopped us, the United Nations could have stopped us, but they didn't. Why? Because they think I've stepped into my own trap. They've seen what Atlas can do, and they know how powerful Atlas has become. They're afraid, more afraid of me than they are of Hades. And with the KVA on the run, who is left to disrupt their status quo? They look at us, and instead of seeing our success, they see a threat. Someone too powerful to control, too powerful to stop. And so they've gambled on our failure and their right to be afraid. Failure is not an option for us. 
As long as we deliver Hades' head on a stick, no one will want to stop us. They'll want to follow us. If you want to sell people on your vision, show them. They call this part of the world the Cradle of Civilization. For 10,000 years, it was the center of trade and culture. Home to kings, caliphates, despots, and dictators. The first images of war I ever saw came from this place. Two wars in two decades with nothing much to show for it. I saw how wars quickly became quagmires, if not prosecuted effectively. If ever there were somewhere that represented the utter failure of governance, Baghdad was it. While our leaders left this place to its fate, I took this as an opportunity to seize our destiny. Fifty years of rot, and we rebuild it in five. Now, New Baghdad is more than just a thriving city. It's a symbol of what's to come. Everybody thinks their ideas are right. That's why the people you call terrorists call themselves freedom fighters. The fundamentalists think they're right, the capitalists think they're right, the communists think they're right. And no one will ever convince anyone of anything. And all these honorable men lecturing the world from the floors of congresses and parliaments whose time has long since passed, refuse to admit, publicly at least, ideas don't determine who's right. Power determines who's right. And I have the power. So I'm right. Forget about doing it in the open water. 
strike from the depths of the ocean, or strike before it's even had a chance to leave port. By collapsing the bridge on the fleet, I will accomplish two things. The first is strategic, disabling the U.S. Third Fleet. The second, symbolic. For a century, the Golden Gate Bridge has stood for U.S. technological innovation and might. Destroy a powerful symbol of strength, and you turn it into an even more powerful symbol of weakness. Make an adversary feel weak, and they will become weak. A cowardly act of terrorism? Who the hell are they kidding? I went up against the largest naval fleet to ever sail the oceans with a small company of highly skilled and highly motivated special operatives and won! They can spin it a thousand different ways, but the images speak for themselves. Cowardly? No. I stand by my actions. Terrorism? <laughs> Most certainly. If your actions do not inspire fear and terror in the hearts of your adversary, then you have no business waging war. The attack came as I predicted it would. In forcing them to react, they reacted foolishly because they are powerless to respond in any other way. An affront to their power is an affront to their very existence, but their show of strength, might, and resolve will merely expose their complete impotence. Power? They have no real power. They have propaganda. They have resources. They have committees and budgets, votes and vetoes, propositions and tabled amendments. All useless. Tomorrow, if we wake up at all, we will wake up to a new dawn, and that's when the real work begins. This moment has been years in the making. Billions of dollars, the years of research, the setbacks, and scientific breakthroughs. Many doubted that this day would come, but it has arrived. The genie is out of the bottle. Manticore exceeded all expectations and performed beautifully. Even now, having seen it with my own eyes, it feels like a miracle. I walked completely untouched as hundreds of enemy combatants lay dying all around me, struck down on the battlefield where they fought. Every man has a unique DNA, a code that is his and his alone, just as each man's destiny is his and his alone. Whoever controls Manticore controls that destiny of mankind. Nothing and nobody can stand in our way. The enemy is at our gate, but we will never let them win. What I've started will continue, whether I'm here to see it or not. I'm merely an agent for change, guiding us toward our shared destiny. Our children will live to see the end of terror, of famine, of oppression, and brutality. A world where all necessities will be provided. A world free from the tyranny of government, of artificial differences, and false beliefs, a world united under one flag. Democracy? Democracy. Democracy isn't what these people need. Hell, it's not even what they want. America's been running around the globe trying to install democracies in nation after nation for a century, and it hasn't worked one time. Now, why do you think that is? Because these countries don't have the most basic building blocks necessary to support a democracy. Little things like, we ought to be tolerant of those who disagree with us, or we ought to be tolerant of those who worship a different god than us, or that a journalist ought to be able to disagree with a fucking president. And you think you can walk into this country based on fundamentalist religious principles, drop a couple of bombs, topple a dictator, and start a democracy? Huh. 
Give me a break. People don't want freedom. They want rules, boundaries, protections. From invaders and from themselves. People need a leader who can both provide the constraints and the support to keep chaos at bay. And you give them that, and they'll follow. And that's where I come in.